More you talk now. Welcome to You Talk. We are back with my favorite co-hosts. We have Katie and Steve, Yay. and of course our resident expert in all things psychology, Dr. Josh. Oh. Thanks for being here, and we are back at our You Talk studio with the nice banner in the back that lets everyone know who we are. Because it's the letter U, not Y O U, but you, you talk. And you talk is all about you talking to us. That's so right. if you yeah. want to reach out to us. You can call us at 855-508-8255. How else can they reach out to us, guys? Well, they can hit us up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, at You Talk Radio. And, if you, and the website has yeah, the text. Yeah, they can always email. And email as well. Website is? YouTalkRadio.com. And what about texting? Well, they can go to the website, utalkradio.com, and they can find out how they can text us. Because, <laughs> you know, people are listening, and if we tell them, they're going to be like, what was that number again? And it's, you know, so just go to our website. That's true. You I mean, that's an easy thing to do. Utalkradio.com, and you can find out all the different ways you can reach out to us, ask us a question. Um, find out what our favorite Italian food is. And, yes, it's, um, it's lasagna, isn't it? It well, no. That's Garfield's favorite. That's Garfield's favorite. Yeah. No. <laughs> so is it your favorite? Since it's Garfield's favorite, it's one of my favorites. Yes, because Garfield loves it. And for those who are listening and don't know, I love Garfield. <laughs> Now, Josh, do you certainly you like Italian food to be in, with this group? This I, I, I do, I do. What's and, your favorite? One of the things that I'm really happy about is I've I've had to be gluten free for about six years now. Oh, and thankfully, especially in Southern California, Lots there is good gluten free Italian oh, food. Yeah. I love my pastas. I love my pizza. I actually had pizza on the way over here. Gluten free pizza. Oh, but have you tried the cauliflower crust now? Yes, do you I, like re- it? I really do like it. Although I'm supposed to avoid dairy now too. I am a pain and has dairy in it. But Katie, I really like it. Cauliflower crust? Seriously? It is really yeah. tasty. It is. How I haven't had that yet. I'm not a big cauliflower fan, so I don't so, know how I'm going to feel about it. It doesn't like, taste like no, cauliflower. It doesn't. I didn't like it the first time I made it because I didn't cook it right. Like, I guess yeah. I didn't cook it long enough or something, and it was like the little flakes were falling off, and it was really gross. But then the second <laughs> time I made it, like, I liked it. But it's because I didn't and, know and what I was doing And when you home make stuff, time. you can control yeah. the ingredients a lot yeah. more, so you could probably do it a, a dairy-free one. Okay, now don't tell me, Katie, you, you make like... Like spaghetti kind of stuff out of zucchini. I do. Oh my soul! We, we've done that zucchini too. Spaghetti noodles. squash. Yeah. Oh, I haven't tried the spaghetti Good. squash yet, but mm-hmm. I do the zucchini noodles. Now, oh, that now good. you being Italian is that kind of like an insult to Italian cooking, or is this it just is. a yeah? <laughs> you know, but, but I you still, put pesto on it, right? I and do. then it kind of drowns the pesto. Yeah. But yeah. I, still, I, you know, but being that's Italian, not you have to eat your pasta. Right. So it's like you have to cheat every once in a while and eat normal pasta. But it's like, a, it, and it, but it's this is a way also to get your veggies in. Yeah, right? right. We don't eat enough vegetables. No. It, you know. Yeah, because I can't imagine there'd be like vegetarian like chow mein, like you know, like where it's like zucchini <laughs> in a chow mein. Because that just isn't right. You no, know what no, I mean? It, yeah. it, I mean, there's it, some it stuff isn't. you just need your pasta. Yeah. Right. Like, nothing absolutely. else works. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Otherwise, it's just a big pain. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you just crave oh, it. and and speaking yeah. of pain, <laughs> Steve, that's the kind of our topic of the day, isn't that? No, it really is. It's, it's kind of a. That's a random transition, Larissa, but we'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you said the word pain, and I just, like, trigger word for me, you know? Uh, okay, okay. No, that, not that I'm a pain. Most of the time. No comment. <laughs> no, no, oh, gee, thanks, Josh. No, seriously. I was speaking for Blue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Blue is with us, isn't he? He is. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, no, you guys know I, I speak on, on school campuses a lot. I I do uh, assemblies right now. I'm doing a lot of them on uh the Until they find out you're there. No, I'm just, no, I'm just no, I talk about bullying and talk about suicide and uh, choices. But this has happened several times. I was thinking about one guy in particular, Justin. He comes up to me after an assembly. I, you know, I play the drums and I, students come up and, and, and we chat. And, and he said, hey, Russo. And I said, yeah, what? He goes, how do you get it to stop? Hmm. I said, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? How Your you drum playing? <laughs> no. No, 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 that wasn't this it? was not the drum playing. No, not this the drum playing. No, no, okay. No. He was very serious. I said, what do you mean? And he goes, the pain. Mm. Ooh, he that's said, heavy. I tried to kill myself and I really didn't want to die. I just wanted the pain to mm-hmm. stop. How do you get it to stop? Mm. Dr. Josh, let, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot towards you real quick to start with because... 
it's it's about coping. You know, my heart breaks it when I hear that kind of thing. You know, and yeah. and I, I've had other students come up to me and say, "Hey, Steve, you, thanks for saving my life. What are you talking about saving your life?" Well. I was going to go home and kill myself, but you made me realize I matter and I'm worth something and I have purpose and and there's a reason I'm here. But the pain is, it, it's just like it's consumed a lot of young adults today. You know, a lot of adults, I mean, people, period. But but we're talking, you talk's all about, you know, um, young adults and, and teens. So where do we start with that? How do we cope with that? How do, uh, how, what do we say to a Justin that, that's listening? And, well, and the, the first thing that I really appreciate about it is it helps raise awareness about what suicide is really about a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every time, it's about pain. It really it is. is. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, and, and I love that the statement in this particular case was, I didn't want to die. I just wanted the pain to stop. Exactly. Yeah. We can apply this to suicide to substance use, to many kinds of behaviors and actions we do that aren't very helpful to us, actually, Mm -hmm. but they help us make the pain to stop at least temporarily. So the goal oftentimes of suicide is exactly what he's saying. So the first step is one, for us as a community to recognize that pain is the issue. And it's not just wanting to be dead, it's wanting to not be in pain. And that helps us build empathy, I think, and compassion. Who doesn't want to not be in pain, right? Oh, I love pain. I'm <laughs> just, right? You just want to be Besides in it all the, the time. Family, <laughs> right? no. but, I mean, and like, we're not really, talking like going to the dentist pain or getting no. a shot from the doctor I mean, pain. Deep you know. emotional pain where it feels like it's never going to stop. It starts making sense why you may do things that appear to be more desperate. Yeah. Right. And things that it's like, well, I would never do that. Well, if you were in that position... You, you might as yeah. well. Yeah, see, I, I don't like it when I hear people say, well, you know, no, 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 don't, don't go down that path because you don't know till you're there. Yeah. yeah, You don't know what it's like. I mean, we can, we want to have empathy even though we don't know exactly. Like when Justin came to me, I was empathetic towards him. I've not been to that point in my life. I, I, I've been in painful situations and desperate situations in a sense but not to that point yet but did he tell you what was the source of the pain because i think that's the next step too is is understanding maybe where the source of the pain comes from yeah it, i think he he was balancing a juggling a couple different things you know family problems uh, right. parents separating and feeling rejected by friends like he didn't really it wasn't so much bullying mm-hmm. for him as much as just he didn't fit it was kind the, the of just, lack of you know, social connection right yeah. can be very I mean, this is the hard part is it can be complex. Right. When I've worked with a lot of youth and parents often are the ones who come in like, I want to know what is the reason behind it. The reality is, is often we end up never finding out what mm. yeah. the reason is. There's usually not It's multiple re- reasons. It's like multiple yeah. reasons. So, I mean, it's useful. If we can identify a cause, that's great because in theory you can remove that cause. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. at least help them cope with Correct. Yeah. that situation. But right? sometimes we can cope even if we don't know what the core cause is. Hmm. How do we do that? I, okay, because that, that's, that, that, that's huge. That's huge. Anybody yeah. have a bad day? Yeah. And you don't know why, you just have a bad day. How do we cope with that? I mean, what are some of the things that you guys do? I mean, Steve, you talked about drumming. Yes. Right? You drum in the assemblies. Yes. Is that a coping strategy for it you? It is. Why? The Josh, because I can, I can sit down and I can express myself on the kit. If I'm angry, I can just play really hard and really loud yep. and drive the neighbors nuts. <laughs> and, and my cause two cats. Cause them pain. Yeah. Yeah. Cause them right. pain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this Steve guy is a pain. Okay. Uh, I actually, when I was in high school, I used to have my cross country coach lived across the court from me. And he would come over on the outside of my house, my bedroom window, and he had a hammer and he would just bang away when I was playing drums. Wow. Of course, I wasn't smart enough to figure, you know, when we were working out for cross country, he'd say, well, Mr. Russo, since you bothered me, uh, you're going to give us an extra five miles. We'll see. And I'm going, I That's wasn't hilarious. computing, you know, it's like I needed to compute a little bit more, but, but no, it is, it definitely is. And music is such an emotional thing. Larissa, oh, yeah. you know, this as a, as a musician and singer and Katie, I know you love listening to music, but it truly is. It's, it is a coping skill for me. As long as I, you know. you've got three points that, that I, I would highlight in there. Okay. One, when you drum, there's a lot of physical activity. Yeah. Right? Yeah, definitely. In coping, really one of the number one things we can do for anxiety, for depression, for a lot of just challenging issues is exercise. 
physical activity. Really? We are a very like punching it's people. Right. No, <laughs> like no, punching. No, yeah, let's not let's try not to do that. Throwing drumsticks at the wall. No, yeah. not that type. Maybe of you thing. create a wall specifically <laughs> for that. <laughs> See, yeah, no. no, actually, Wait, play the so don't right. hurt right. other people with your exercise. Yes. Yes. Try not to do that. But you know, if you have a dog, walk the dog. It's good for everybody. Even right. a walk. But the physical activity, that is a really helpful coping hmm. strategy. Think about when we have a lot of stuff going on inside of us, there's physical correlates to the emotions. That gets all pent up. And then what do we do? We explode. Sit. Yeah. Or oh. we sit. So I explode. Until. <laughs> until. Until, until we explode. explode. Got it. Or we go to sleep. We avoid. Where does that physical energy go? I mean, it just sits there. Our bodies were built to get the energy out. Oh, so good. do good. physical activity. Drumming is a perfect example. Okay. And I'm not a drummer, but when I observe, <laughs> drummers I are into it, right? Oh, we, I mean, we are. Yeah. No. Um, expression. Expressing yourself. Okay. Finding creative ways. The arts are fantastic coping strategies in so many different ways. I mean, I know all three of you do that in a form. I mean, growing up doing theater. That's an expression right. in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. And then music. I mean, that's part of the expression. M people, that's one of the powerful things about music, ultimately, and why people get drawn to different types of music, right. mm. especially at different times. Especially for folks who have potentially more frequent challenges, one of the things that I would definitely recommend is put a playlist of music together that you know helps oh. lift you up and motivate you. Mm. That you know when I'm in that moment and everything looks very dark and I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. What helps get you through that? Hmm. Yeah. I actually put together a couple of Spotify playlists during the suicide prevention campaign that I did mm. um, called I Feel Alive. And so they're on there. I mean, people want to look them up. The one's called Finding the Light. And, you know, the other one's just hashtag I Feel Alive. Because, again, one was more energetic to, like, motivate people yeah. to yeah. celebrate yeah. life. Oh, the other one was Celebrate Life. That's the name of the yeah. <laughs> Celebrate Life and Finding the Light. And the other one, Finding the Light, was more, like, pensive and reflective yeah. and inspirate, Like, more like, you know, you don't want to Kind of be, contemplative. Yeah, or, contemplative. Yeah. But it was inspiring you, like, to, to kind of encourage you. It's kind of like a pep talk, but yeah. you're not the rah-rah pep talk. The other one's a rah-rah pep talk. I'm here, I'm alive, celebrating life. The other one is more like, you know, you have a lot to live for, that type of pep I talk. could see having several different playlists. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? For me, yeah, just, exactly. just drum solo after drum solo after drum solo. Seriously, you know, I mean, <laughs> because of that energy and you're into it, but then something that's that's more contemplative and, and you know, something that, that yeah, just exactly different right. And ones. we need different things at different times. I mean, you think yeah. about, connect back to exercise. People make exercise playlists or for different right. kinds yeah. of things yeah. that keep them going at different ways. We don't do that sometimes or we forget to do that mm. for our emotions. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's just as powerful, if not more so. Wow. I mean, there are a few things. I, again, I grew up doing theater. I love my musical theater soundtracks. Right. There are a couple of go-to albums that I'm like, <laughs> when I am in a bad mood, if I listen to this yeah. one, yeah. it lifts you up. I, I, it will help me. Wow. Yep. Yep. Good stuff. Yes. Very yeah. good stuff. That's a start. I mean, we talked about social support. Sure. Too, that disconnection from people. Yeah. That's really, that, that's one of the best Not things to do. Not being alone. Really important. Not yeah. being alone. Not isolated. But with people who will support you. Going back right. to that. As empathy opposed to support. people yeah. who are criticizing you or telling you like, oh, there's nothing wrong with you or what's wrong, either what's wrong with Correct. you or dismissing Correct. it as like, oh, why are you even acting Which is why way? it's yeah. important for us as a community to be able to recognize this is what's really going on. I'm trying to avoid pain. Now let's have some empathy. That's where it's hard for a lot of folks and especially youth yeah. where it's maybe your family is not supportive. Maybe your family is not the safe place. And yeah. legitimately, there's a lot of folks where that is the case. And you can't just go and leave them yeah. either. Yeah. yeah, Trying to find that, sometimes it's really, really hard. Ooh, but I like I the say, safe place. Where, where do you go to find that? Okay, you can't find it at home. So then, then where do you go? School is one. Okay. I mean, this is where, so friends, I mean, yeah, we right. wonder why. Yeah. Some friends are useful. I was going to say, if they're, so friends, if they're good friends. Yeah. If they're good friends. Yeah. If they're good friends. Teachers can be Coaches. very much safe places. Uh -huh coaches, school counselors. I mean, you can go therapy. Uh, for a lot of people, they're, they're places of faith. This is where, okay, sure. uh, mm -hmm. you know, spirituality, and it can be broadly defined. Now, there are some spiritual communities that are not safe places. Let's mm. just be honest no, about that. And absolutely. they will make it worse. Yeah. There are some that are greatly beneficial and really can rally around as a community. And so there's spiritual coping actually out there too. Yeah. yeah. You know, no. that, that, that can be useful. But really a community who you know is there for you, who supports you. I mean, imagine if I know there is at least one person there who loves me, supports me, and has my back, what kind of difference does that make? Huge. And isn't, yeah. it, huge. isn't it true, Dr. Josh, a lot of times somebody just wants to be heard. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, like where that 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 the pain is in there. Like you said, you, they're they're sitting there. It's locked up because they have no outlet for it. And so sometimes it's just a matter of somebody telling someone else what they're going through. And like you said, having somebody to say sure. they have empathy for them. When, when they know it's safe. Um, yeah. I, I was thinking about the first two forums we did, yeah. uh, the anti-suicide bullying, where, I mean, it was just amazing. I remember when the students were there and they were kind of wondering, are you guys going to be safe? And we started right. talking about our backgrounds and drumming and Katie, you know, and her pageants and and, and Dr. Josh Yu being a Trekkie. And mm -hmm. it seemed like one, we crossed a bridge and boom, it was like they didn't stop talking for two hours. Right. And then yeah. with parents, same kind of right. thing. When they realized it was safe, it was a non, I'll use it, non-judgment zone, if you will have yep. it. I mean, they yep. just started talking, 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 and, and that's it. Larissa, I think that's such a key thing is somebody who will listen. And, mm -hmm. and I think another, for me, another key thing is, is being able to admit, I don't, I don't feel good. I, uh, I, I don't to say like that, how to be I'm, okay to say that. Yeah. yeah. To be okay to yeah. say, I just want the pain to stop. Yeah. And you know what? I'd rather die than live with this pain. Because yeah. right. this yeah. pain is just <sighs> eating me up. Right. Yeah. And I guess I think some people just want someone to tell them they're going to be okay. You know, like they, yeah. they're, they're going to make it through the day. Um, cause I know like when I've, I went through depression, you know, several years ago and I think it was hard waking up in the morning, I was living with my parents at the time. And like, I couldn't talk to like what you were saying, like sometimes your families just don't understand. Like my, my parents just didn't understand to quote Will Smith, <laughs> Fresh <laughs> Prince of Bel -Air, or I guess he wasn't Fresh Prince of Bel-Air at that point. But, but you know, like it was, it was something where I, I did feel like nobody understood and like people were going to judge me. And so when I did find friends and people to talk to that, that would, were like, yeah, like, we know what you're going through, as opposed to just dismissing it. It's like, oh, it's not a big deal. Or, you know, because uh, my parents had no idea, like, what I was going through. And I think, let's take it a step further, because I'm thinking of a of a girl that was at the, the student forum who, um, you need somebody to not just tell you, but be willing to walk with you through yeah. it. Because I remember her saying, you know, hey, I go to a Christian school, and I'm really sick and tired of people saying, just read your Bible and pray, and everything's going to be okay. She goes, I, I need more. I, I want somebody to walk with me. I want somebody to unpack that. And yeah. we need that, you know, whether a place of faith or not, just, just bottom line is, you're going to be okay, but I'm going to be here with you. Yeah. That, that being with somebody, that right. presence, yeah. I mean, it, it, it gets to your point too. And, and I would say you, as the person walking with, you don't have to know. You don't have to know the answer it's just or being something. There. Yeah. It's yeah. just being there. Right. I'm willing to explore. I'm willing to explore the darkness with you. I'm willing right. to walk through the forest. I mean, you would think about our media stories and yeah. uh, Harry Potter's coming to mind. I know we <laughs> talked about that before, but yeah. you know, going into the forbidden forest with friends, nobody knows what we're looking at. Nobody knows exactly where to go. But we're in it together. Oh, so I'm thinking of Stranger Things. Lord of the Rings. I mean, go yeah, down I mean, our list. Right, yeah. yeah, it's about the journey together. Mm -hmm. Right, makes the huge difference. Community once again. Absolutely. Yeah. And in some of those cases, they didn't know that it was going to be okay. Yeah. But we're like, we're going to do it together. We're going to do together. it. We're going to do yep. it together. Yeah. No. And and right. you got to find that community. It doesn't have to be a lot of people. It doesn't have to no. be an army. It no. can just uh, be no. be one person. You know, two people. You know, whatever. And it's not always a simple solution. You no. Know, like as you no, kind of no, started no. the conversation with, where it's not like you take this pill and everything is going to be okay, or you just take this. You know. Step one, two, three, and Correct. boom, all your problems are going to go away. It's not like that, and you don't know, necessarily know how long it's going to be. It's and it not can be like, very long. And yes. it, yeah, and, and and some people experience those feelings for a very long time, and it's it's finding those people that are willing to stick it out with you through that journey. And again, to reassure you, though, you're feeling this is not abnormal. Like, yeah, it's, it's okay like, to it's, feel that It's okay way. to yeah. feel this yeah. way, and we will help you through it and walk with you through it. And you bring up an important point that it doesn't just go away quickly. And the reality that we need to admit is it may never go away. And Ooh. we can deal with it. Hmm. Yes. We yeah. can great point. cope with it to the best. Yeah. You know, it, it, especially in California, yeah. in the, especially the public system, there's a lot of talk about these ideas of recovery, re wellness, resilience. And, and to me, core to this is oftentimes when we're talking about true mental illness, it can be chronic, meaning it could be lifelong or it could be many years at mm. minimum. That doesn't mean people can't have a productive, meaningful life. Right. What can yeah. we do? I may deal with symptoms. I mean, let's talk about it in terms of diabetes. 
for instance. Ooh. People have diabetes for decades and for years, and usually it never goes away. Right. Can you live with it? Can you cope with it? Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. Can. you can. You just need to, you, you need to somebody to walk with you. To. You right. need to, you know, we look, to put down the list of chronic medical conditions. That's true in the psychological world hmm. as well. But we normally we never it. deal with our emotions or our mental state in the same way that Correct. we treat uh, physical, physical yeah. thing. And so, I mean, I think that's, that's kind of an attitude where society has to change yes. so that we can help people. Well, hey, we want to remind you that we are here to help you. You know, it's it. That's why we come together like this, Dr. Josh. We're grateful to have you and and Katie and Larissa and and uh, it's you talk is all about you talking to us. So reach out to us. Let us know if you're hurting. Go to our website, utalkradio.com. There's ways you can contact us. Social media at Utah Radio. You can call us eight five 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 zero eight eight two five five, or you can uh, text us. Text the word Utah to four one one two four seven. Hey, we'll be back again. Look forward to being with you. Thanks. You talk radio.